All right, so now we can do a, um, another case, but before we do that, let's actually um, let's actually do this for real. Here's the IPython. Um, let's take a nice new um, environment. Let's go to um, page rank two. We don't need to change any parameters. We just copy it. And then we run it. And this one doesn't produce any pretty pictures, it just produces some numbers. So if we look at this, as we'll see, it does several methods. The method I went through is actually the probably usually the best method, and there's actually also the simplest method. And the um, you know, you feed in the array, this is the array which um, which I um, called A here is the array I just went through. I'm just about to go through an eight by eight array called Ops, and um, I now need to run it, having typed it in, and it comes back immediately. And we run these five methods. And they give um, nice page ranks, and all. And if you look in detail, part of the font size too small here. But you will find that all five methods give exactly the same answer. It also tells you when it stops, and um, the first matrix had needed just 18 iterations, and the second matrix actually needs more iterations, 87. Um, so, um, and in fact, it doesn't quite give numerically the same answers, but it's in differs in a very small decimal place. So that's running the code. You just get the printout and verify that the page rank. I mean, this is the rank of um, site one, site two, site three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the the um, next matrix. So that's the page rank Python here, and this is the second eight by eight matrix which you got from a AMS website. For, uh, I don't quite remember why, but they did not want any damping in this case here, um, and. Um, we just, um, I typed in this, uh, they have this on the website. I typed it into the Python code as a preset definition. And then we ran it, and we got this result, which uh, is, these are the um, page ranks. And uh, actually, site eight is, by, is much the largest page rank, 0.295. Next is site 6.2025, 7.18. And the smallest is site three, and you can uh, actually see here's the here's this graph, and um, this this is a version of the graph with coloring. So the lighter color means you're loved more, and then your page rank is higher. And page eight is the lightest color, and poor old page three that looks like one of my pages. It has a very dark color because people it's very sad as it was not liked by many people. Page rank of 0 .03. 0 .03 is probably very good in the real world, but on eight, if you only have a world with eight sites, it's not so good. And you're going to see why it's not very good. It's only actually um, pointed to by one site, number one, and number one is itself only pointed to by one site. So there's at least four old sites here, three and one, just don't have much chance. Not, not enough people know about them. Whereas side eight here, you see, has lots of people pointing to it, seven, five, and six. There are three other methods given on this website and are listed in that page rank two file. I just briefly uh, uh, mentioned them. Uh, the method we just went through called the power method base is um, just taking this equation here, x equals the damping factor uh, d times a plus one minus d times the 
matrix of ones and um, times S is the matrix of ones. That's the method we already went through. Very simple to implement. So actually, you can um, slightly uh, change the method because if you do some arithmetic, you will find that um, S2 times X is just actually summing up the components of X. They actually don't matter what X is, they're always the same because the comp uh, components of X always add up to one. So you can actually replace this by a slightly different form, X equals D times A times X plus one minus D times a fixed vector S1, where S1 is always ones. So that just gives you a refinement of the method, which is the, what's called par method. And remember, this method solved automatically in the Python code. And we print out the answer, and all methods give the same answer. There are actually four methods in the original uh, Python pa page. I added one more method, which took, which is called par method base one, which basically I already described. It replaces the stopping criterion by a threshold rather than by a number of iterations. So we've gone through uh, two of the four methods on the patron 2py page. The last two are really mathematical curiosities and not such serious methods. If we look at the basic equation, x equals d times ax plus one minus d times s1, which was the form we um, introduced on the last page. We can uh, write that as a, as a sort of solver form, one minus d, a matrix times x equals one minus d times s1. So this is a basic linear equation solver, and you can just, uh, except for the special case d equals one, where you don't get a good answer here, um, because you you get zero when you can't, in general, solve an answer with zero there. Uh, you can solve these linear, that's because this is sort of the wrong way to think about it. So you can then call a linear equation solver and just get the answer. So this is not, in my opinion, a serious method for a real problem. It's mathematically correct, but highly inefficient. Uh, especially because the matrix A is, is uh, sparse. Uh, this this uh, course doesn't really go through the different uh, key ideas in, in solving um, in solvers. But when you have sparse matrices, you tend to use iterative methods. Because uh, if you use non-iterative methods, they tend to wipe out the sparseness and not exploit the sparseness. And that gives you, um, wastes a lot of time, especially in the, as this matrix is uh, 25 billion by 25 billion on an in row and column, only around 20 uh, values are non-zero. So this is a hugely sparse matrix, not exploited by this method. So that's the linear equation method. It gives the right answers for the test cases we did, which uh, these general comments are irrelevant for, and um, so it's fine. It is mathematically correct. Um, then uh, we note that actually this uh, we can go back to the original form of the equation: x equals d times a plus one minus d s two times x. So that's actually an eigenvector equation, and where x is an eigenvalue, and actually the, you can show the eigenvalue is one. And also that this is the largest eigenvalue. So actually, the, um, another way of, do, of solving this problem is to find all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And, um, and that's the last method, maximal eigenvector. Uh, that's a very general method. But in fact, if you only want to find uh, one eigenvector, the maximum, then the par method, which is the first, uh, the first uh, method or the first two methods, done already on the previous pages, it's a much the most efficient. There is a refined version of that called Arnoldi's method, which is actually what you would use uh, uh, probably in practice. But um, you would not, the eigenvector is mathematically correct and the general solution, but you obviously need to exploit these key features. You only need one eigenvector and the one eigenvalue, and you need to exploit sparseness. That requires a certain solution method, which is effectively a sparse matrix vector multiplication. So that's the end of these two methods.